Well, hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is James Timmons. Today uh, we're on part three uh, for our very beginners using the Wilcom Embroidery Studio software. And today we're going to talk about the object properties menu inside the Wilcom Embroidery Studio software and kind of get acquainted with the some of the uh, some of the options that we have here in order to make uh, beautiful embroidery. First, uh, we're going to, um, I'm just going to just bring up some text uh, here on the screen by right clicking here, going in and um, typing in Wilcom, Wilcom lettering. And we've, we've learned earlier that we, if we want to change our font, we can click here and we can choose our font that we want to use for this. If we choose our font for this, uh, we can scroll down. Uh, we're going to work on the free line. I'm going to choose create text and we're just going to left click on the screen here. OK. So today I just wanted to share with you uh, how to use the, the text inside the Wilcom Student Burning Burning Studio software. And for one thing, um, we talk about the object properties inside the software they're, they're basically uh, just uh, templates if you will um, editing capacity and being able to go in and uh, change the settings in order to get a better result and here with the text on the screen here and I'm gonna just kind of zoom in here a little bit uh, further here so you can see this so once you get the text on the screen, um, you'll need to go in and set up the properties for that. Now, one way that you can set up the properties, and there are several things that we're going to talk about here with this. We're going to talk about the fills. Okay. We're going to talk about the uh, pull comp, and we're going to talk about the connectors. These are the main things here that we want to talk about with this because these things are what's going to give us the right settings in order to create some beautiful embroidery. The first one here, um, we're going to go in uh, to the fills. Um, as I select the fills, now the stitch uh, types that we're working with here, and we'll talk about the stitch types at a, at a later session here also, um, but here's the satin stitch is what we're going to work with here using the Wilcom text. Okay. There are basically three types of stitches in the software that you'll be working with based on the size of the finished embroidery. One, here's a satin stitch, here's a running stitch, and here's a tatami stitch. These are the three stitch types that, that we'll be working with today. Uh, we're looking at the satin stitches. And in our properties here, it's telling us here that this is a satin stitch or a uh, column stitch. Okay. Now here in the fills, we have the option to go in and do the stitch spacing or auto spacing. I'm going to zoom in. When we talk about uh, auto spacing. This is the space between the stitches. Here, um, as far as our view is concerned, right now we're in true view. As I navigate over, this is your true view tab here. I'm going to turn this off by left clicking. And so this is what we have here now in the regular stitch view. Okay. Now the stitch spacing is the space between each stitch. Okay. And if I were to go in to go in and open up this stitch spacing here, let's say that I tried to stitch this out and it was too tight and it was uh, kind of bulking up my fabric as it was stitching out and I need to loosen this density, I, I would just go in and select that here, go to my fills and here for my adjust, I can move this up here. The higher this number, Okay, the, the less stitches will be in the in the optic actually, it'll loosen it. Here's before as it was tighter. Here is looser now here at 103% uh, here. So the higher this number gets here, the looser those stitches get. Okay, but we have to be careful because if I go back and turn on my true view, we don't want this look here where you have your underlay stitches showing on the fabric. Okay, so normally um, at, at 100, is a uh, starting place. Now, in your properties, I think yours may be 
defaulted to 90% like this, which is a little tighter. And what you need to do is once you stitch this out, you can determine, you know, is the stitch uh, spacing enough for, for that particular project actually, because you want to make sure when you stitch it out that you're not seeing any fabric underneath these to make sure it's stitching out correctly. Okay. So at 90%, if I stitch it out and it's uh, buckling up the fabric, if it's too tight, I have to loosen this density fill. Okay. I have to loosen it up. Okay. If this is too loose and I'm seeing fabric through, this means that I have to go in and I usually use 80%. And so this is the density setting that I usually use here um, for this size and this width here also. Okay. Now, as we scroll down here, uh, we're just going to talk about the auto split stitch here. Under the fills tab, I'm going to select the object. And after I select that here, I can go in. Now here with the auto split, you can't tell a difference here with it selected. If I take it off, you can't tell a difference whether it's on, and on or off here. Uh, the length of the satin stitch here, the width of it here, the default is at seven millimeters. And what happens is once you get a column stitch and it's too wide for regular stitching and and it forces your machine to slow down, the speed to slow down. You can go in and you could, um, in order to continue to use the satin stitch, you can do an auto split stitch. For this small size here, um, we're not gonna need that auto split stitch. What's gonna happen is as the size gets larger, let's say that um, I have a size here on a jacket bag, that's gonna be, um, 12 inches. Okay. Now here, I want you to look at the lower left side here. This is the stitch count currently now. I'm going to undo it. This is the stitch count at a smaller size here. Okay. Um, this, this As I increase the size of the design, okay, the stitch count is also going to increase as well. Now, using um, fonts like this in this particular scenario, now you have a, uh, I'm going to give you a scenario of how wide a column should be before we have to change that stitch type to the next level. Okay. So normally, and I'm going to navigate here, I'm going to, um, okay. And so I'm going to show you uh, column widths here that are normal that we can use in our production actually. This one here and the minimum width for a column here in order for it to stitch out on fabric is 1.2 millimeters. Okay. This is 1.2 millimeters. Okay. If I press my number one key for the one-to-one -one view, this is how wide 1.2 millimeters is. That's the minimum width for a column. Okay. I'm going to right click this here and I'm going to make this wider 4.0. Okay. And we'll make this one 10.0. Well, let's make it, um, yes, 10.0. And we'll make this one 12.1. So as far as using the uh, satin stitches inside your software, again, uh, this, I'm going to show you a running stitch also. I might, might as well put this on here also. These are the stitch types here that we'll, that we'll be working with in the Wilcom software. Okay. And based on, uh, everything is based on the size of the finished embroidery. The size of the finished embroidery is going to tell you what you can and what you cannot do 
uh, it's going to tell you what type of stitch that you can use and what stitch that you can't use for this particular object that you're working with inside the software. Now, these are very important. Now, the difference between these and why these are important and for you to understand um, how they work inside the software, here's your running stitch. Now, I'm going to right click this. I'm going to add it, put this first here. Your regular running stitch has a, has a count of approximately 15 stitches per centimeter from point A to point B, 15 stitches per centimeter. You have some that are, um, they're double stitches. Like if I click this, watch what happens here when I choose the backtrack. So this is a double stitch here, which is gonna produce approximately 30 stitches per centimeter. Okay. Your smallest column stitch here is gonna produce 50 stitches per centimeter. Okay, a thicker one is going to produce about the same, you know, um, might go up about maybe 60. Um, but here, um, it also, if it gets any larger than that, now it's going to be stitching approximately uh, 70, to, uh, 70 to 120 stitches per square centimeter once it gets in between this and this here. Okay, between 70 and 120 stitches. Per centimeter. Now here with this one at eight, this is considered a long stitch. And you see here, as I zoom in, it's got a, a kind of a, a, a split in it like this. That's what this auto split stitch here is for. It's set to seven millimeters though. Anything past seven millimeters, it's going to do a split in order to um, reduce the possibility of a thread break uh, or stitches that are too long for a satin stitch or a column stitch, okay? If I click this off here, it'll do, I can still stitch this straight, straight across like this at eight millimeters wide, which is now the stitch is getting really wide, okay? And uh, at this point here, this is the, now I can go, if I make this, I mean, I've done some 10 millimeters wide, Rarely, but here um, I can go 10 millimeters wide. This one here at 12.1, this is the maximum width for a for a normal uh, for regular for most embroidery machines. The stitch length, the maximum is 12.1 millimeters wide. This is the maximum, and this means that at this point, if I try to do a satin stitch longer than 12.1, uh, only the barrier machines do a 12.7. So if I do try to do a satin stitch without using the auto split stitch like this, longer than 12.1, this is what's going to happen. Okay, this is 10 millimeters. This is beyond or this is right at uh, or this is too wide for me to try to use a regular satin stitch with this. Okay, and see see what see see what you see here also. Um, and look at the types of lines that are on the screen now. This is solid lines. This means your, your embroidery machine is still stitching at regular speed, okay, even though it's a long stitch. This, when you see the dotted lines, these are jump stitches. This is when your machine is going ka-choo, ka-choo, ka-choo. It's going from straight across because this stitch is too wide for a regular satin stitch, okay. I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on my uh, true view here. Now, I can't see that here from looking at the true view, but just knowing that 12.1 is a maximum stitch width. So at this point now, I can no longer, unless I'm going to use the auto split stitch here, I can no longer, in, in, some, in some instances or a lot of instances, you don't want to use the auto split stitch at this point. It's too wide for a column stitch, so what do I need to do? At this point here, it has to be done, uh, as I select this here, it has to be uh, done as a tatami stitch, okay? and so. Um, so right click here and choose convert. I'm going to break this apart first. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to choose convert. I'm going to change this into a, a tatami stitch here. Now, and this is what it looks like now. Because I can't make a satin stitch this wide without using the um, split with, for the auto split. Now I have to change this stitch type here to, uh, I have to upgrade it here to a tatami stitch. And this stitch is uh, 200 stitches per square centimeter. 
So I only use this stitch when I absolutely have to. Okay, only when I absolutely have to. And this is and this means that the more stitches that it generates is going to in, increase your production time also. So you want to use this stitch type here as less as possible. If it's large enough, uh, you have you don't have a choice. You have to use it. If the uh, design and the objects are large enough, you have to use this stitch. And that's what this stitch is designed for: large fill areas. Okay. And with the and by showing you this now, so right now, so I'm fine as far as uh, I don't have to use the auto split stitch with this. Uh, it's going to change though if I increase the size of this, or I go in and I uh, change the font. Let's say right now. If I choose a different font, okay. And again, as as large as this gets, as long as you see the visual here of how wide the stitch can be in order for me to use a satin stitch, you're fine. Because here, this is in between these two, so I can still it's still safe to use a satin stitch for this, okay. And so, um, so as this as you're working inside the software, just know that. Um, be mindful of the width that you're using because uh, it could cause some problems in production and we don't want to you know stop production or ca cause a hiccup in production because we missed something uh, here okay now um so the fills you select the object here under your fills you go in and you could adjust the auto spacing and you could adjust or add the auto split stitch if that column gets really, really, really wide. Okay, and that's pretty much um, what, what we'll use the fills uh, menu here for inside the object properties. Okay. I'm gonna undo this here to take it back. The next tool I'm gonna talk about, the next docker here, um, I wanna talk about is the pull comp settings here. The pull comp is a docker basically that allows you to adjust the pull compensation of a design or your text here on the screen. And you can add um, a column width to increase the column width of the design. And here with this, as I select this on my screen here, right now the pull compensation, the default here is 0.17 on my, on my screen here basically. Pull compensation and column width are two totally different things. They're not the same at all. So you can't use pull compensation to make a column wider. It's only for the pull and stretch on the fabric once it's stitching in production. That's what the pull compensation for. And usually, um, if I were to increase mine, uh, I'll, I usually never go above 0.2. Okay. Again, this is for the stretch and pull on the fabric. Okay. If I want to make this bolder i can choose column width here and i can adjust the column width i'll start with 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.05 to 10 to 15 i can go all the way up like this it's going to make the columns bolder by me using the column width if i want to increase the width of a column so you'll always use the column width to do this with here actually okay very important to understand the column, the difference between the column width and the um, pull compensation. I can even take this negative, like this. Okay, so you have that much control, uh, pretty much on your lettering and, and incre increasing the size of it and improving the thickness of it, especially if you're going to stitch something on a cap. Okay, and that's what that does inside the software. It helps you. Thicken up the columns. Okay. This is a great tool here, again, because uh, lots of times when you need to go in and increase uh, the width of a column, basically, you want to be able to do it in a simple way here. Here, just by going in, right clicking on this, going to your object properties, and choosing pull comp. Okay. One major difference between these two items here is this. Let me show you here. And I'll just grab. This one, I'm going to right click over here and move this over there. And I'm going to right click this again to do a quick clone of it. Just like this. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to take off the true view. Now, for these, I want to go in, I want to change the uh, underlay here, 
talk about this in a few minutes here. And I just want to use the edge run underlay stitch for this. So now, uh, to show you the difference between uh, the pull comp and the column width, if I were to select this item here and go to my pull comp and thinking that the pull compensation is going to make the, the columns wider, if I increase this, I'll make this 100, 1 1.0. I'm going to undo this and I'm going to redo it. I want you to see what's happening here. Pay close attention to what's happening and what's not happening. Okay. So the pull comp here, uh, it, it did, uh, it went out. And because it's based on the pull and stretch on the fabric, like for the difference between stitching on canvas and stitching on a, uh, a towel, basically, this overstitches the object, basically. It overstitches it if it were going on towel material. It needs to overstitch in order for it you to, to have a column that's wide enough and that can be seeable on the actual fabric. So that's what the pull comp does here actually. Again, it's for the pull and stretch on the fabric as it overstitches. Now, we're gonna do the same thing to this one, but this time we're gonna choose the column width. And I'm gonna also make this 1.0. I'm gonna press enter. Now, you see this? Okay. So you see the difference. on just for the pull compensation, it, it it pushed them out, but it didn't, the underlay stitch didn't move. So on this object here, if I were to stitch this on fabric, on a towel, it's going to do something like this. It's going to look like, it's going to look just like this. Why? Because it has no protection on the borders here. Here, the borders go directly out where they should be, protecting the border here for a nice smooth, uh, crisp edge, but here it didn't do it. So whenever you want to increase the width of a column, you're always going to use the column width. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do here is by taking off the um, true view here, uh, we're being seen some objects here on the screen. I'm going to also press S or I'm gonna navigate here to the show stitches. And um, when you look at these letters here, you see a little zero here, and you also see a triangle. The zero is gonna always represent the beginning, the starting point where the machine starts to stitch. And it's gonna add a lock stitch here to lock it in. That's where the zero is here. It's gonna start stitching here. It's gonna go through all of this, all of these segments here, and here is a stop with a triangle. The triangle will always be defined by a trim or a color change as it goes to the next object, which does what we call a tie-in stitch. And at the end here with the triangle, a tie-off stitch to lock, it has to lock it in and lock it at the end, at the beginning and the end in order to keep these stitches from unraveling, okay? And this is what they look like here without the stitches shown on the screen like this. Okay. I'm going to press S here again. Now, what we can see here also, you can see the dotted lines here. And again, these represent uh, trims because this is the same color. And you'll also see these um, on color changes as well. Okay. You'll see this dotted line. So now, um, how do we go in and how do we fix? Um, I'm going to select the true view here again. So, if we want to go in and we want to, uh, let's say that we have this lettering on the screen and we wanted to go in and we wanted to um, close the sections up here, or we wanted to go in and add connections or take away connections. And let's say right now uh, with this, I'm going to go into my effects here. Right now, with the true view showing, you don't see any connection stitches here underneath. You only see them when you take off the true view with the trims here. But with the true view turned on, here, whenever there's, uh, whatever you see here on the screen with the true view is going to stitch out the same way. So you're not going to have any, so there, there, there are trims going on between these letters here because there are no connection stitches joining them. If I were to right click this, 
and do a quick clone of it here. And if I were to change the size of this, let's say, let's say I wanted to make this um, 3.4. Oops, I'm gonna change my, met my metric system here first, guys. I wanna make this four inches wide. Okay, this is four inches wide. Okay, at four inches wide, what do we see? We see connection stitches on the letters here. Okay, and at this size here, you know, it may be necessary to use the connection stitches because the letters are very close together this time. They're not spread out like you see here on the much larger design. Okay, and so anything that's gonna be this small here at four inches, you know, the connection stitches, they may be, uh, they may be uh, good to leave these in here. As I take off the true view, as you can see here, the only trim that you see is between the M and the L here. Okay. And that's what it looks like here, again, with the text a lot smaller. Okay, I'll click it back on my true view here. Now, if I were to go in and space these letters out, go here, go to my specials tab here, and I increase the letter spacing. Just a little bit, the 13. On well, some of these areas I have uh, trims because there are no connection stitches here. And some of them I have connection stitches because they're closer together like this. If you ever wanna go in and control how when a machine trims or when a machine continues to run, uh, the place that, that you're gonna do that here will be your connectors tab, okay? This is your connectors tab. And right now, here it is uh, the place where we go in and we tell the sewing machine when to trim or when to jump to continue running, okay? And because we have Wilcom letters here, how do we know? Because if we look at our color object list, it's showing the, the letter A here for a Wilcom text, that's what this is here. Now, I wanna go in now and I want to uh, tell the machine what to do. Now, I may have a customer that's very picky and does not like these connection stitches here. So this means that I'm gonna to have to go in and I'm gonna to have to take them out uh, here to do a trim. Now, with this selected, because I'm using a Wilcom font here, I have to navigate up top here to my drop arrow and choose inside object. This is what you'll always use when you're using a Wilcom font, okay? Because you have the text on a text string here. And if you click one, you select everything. And so once I choose inside the object, now it's up to me to tell the machine when to do a trim and when not do, to do a trim. Right now, once I've set this, I'll go to trim after. And right now the settings here are, for the trim after are, if the next connector after the L, after the E, after the T, after the T, after the E, if that is greater than uh, two millimeters, it's gonna do a trim. Okay, so the space between each area here, I'm telling the embroidery machine, if that space is longer than 2.0 millimeters wide, I wanna do a trim. So we can tell now that this area here is not two millimeters wide, it's much less. Okay, so what could I do to add trims between these characters here with this? Of course, I'll have to make this number smaller. So if I make this number 1.0 millimeters and press enter, you see this is before, this is after. So now the machine knows that if there's any spaces in between any characters that are greater than one millimeter, it's gonna do a trim, okay? And as it goes in, it's gonna do its uh, tie-in stitch. At the end here, here's your tie-off stitch at the end here actually, okay? This is at the end of the design. And you have to have those in order for the uh, stitching to remain inside the fabric locked so it does not unravel. Okay, and that's what the trim after does. So and if you have Wilcom Tech that you're uh, looking at here, you're trying to work on the connectors, trying to get the machine to trim, this is what you'll use the inside object with those. Any other objects, you'll be able to use the after object, okay? 
As we scroll down uh, further here, in the connectors tab, here are tie-in stitches here. And I showed you earlier that um, the tie-in stitches here are gonna, this little circles here are tie-in stitches. You press start on your machine, the needle goes in, it goes, it does two short stitches, then the machine speeds up. It locks it at the beginning, and at the end, when it finishes it, it goes, it locks those at the end also. We have to have these in there. Okay, or the fat or the stitches will unravel and it's not a pretty sight. Okay, so at this point here with the tying stitches, what my settings are, I have them set to after trim or color change. That's what the CC here is for, color change. At the previous connector before it is greater than two millimeters, I'm gonna do a tie-in stitch. Okay, and so it's gonna tie in and it's gonna continue to run to the end. And with this, the length of the stitch is one millimeter. The number of stitches for the tie-in stitches are two stitches. Okay, now let's take a look at the tie-off stitches at the end. Here's here are my settings. I want a tie-off stitch before a trim or color change. Always tie-off last at the end. If the next connector is 2.0, I want a tie-off stitch there. And for my method here of stitching, I'm going to choose the center method here for my lock stitch because it does a running stitch. Okay, and it's thinner and it's um, you don't see it as, as much as you would see this little X here that stitches on, especially with the small letters. Okay, so I'll use this method here with this, allowing it to do just a uh, center. Here's my length for this stitch here is at 0.5. I can make this 1.0 here also uh, as the other one. It's just a smaller, uh, if, if it's at 0.5, it's a little smaller stitch. Okay, and so I'm gonna leave that there for the settings. I'm going to press T again. Now, and if I if I want to go in, if I want to uh, save this permanently, if I want to save these these uh, settings here that I just went in here and did, if I want to save those permanently, I can click Save here, and I can change my default settings here. If I want to use these continually, I can change them for the default here. And just click OK to confirm that and just click OK here. And it will save these settings here permanently um, to my workspace. All right. And I can use those again. So this, in a nutshell, is the connectors tab here. And I explained to you what it does. We'll get more into detail with this a little bit later. Uh, but I just want to give you just a brief description of what, what this does for us uh, in improving the uh, quality of our stitching. Okay. Here, I'm going to zoom in. Now, um, the next um, tool we're going to talk about here is the underlay. The underlay, of course, allows you to put underlay stitches underneath our uh, objects. Okay, I'm going to click on the uh, true view here, take it off. Now, when you have stitches that are this small, any small lettering at all, you never want to use by shape. This is designed for large fill areas, like for uh, big jacket backs and things like that, or something very large. Uh, we want to always do by segment when we're talking about uh, lettering, because each letter, as I press S here, some of them have three segments. Here's one segment here, here's two, here's three. The E only has one. The R has one, two, three. And you want to you want you want to do these by segment. Okay. And so also for the something this thin here, also you're always going to use a center run stitch for that also. Okay. In the center run underlay stitch, I've got my length here set to two millimeters. Okay. And so as I scroll down. Um, here somehow there's a secondary underlay stitch here select and I'm going to deselect this. I don't need this. It takes away that uh, zigzag. And for something that that's this small, this is appropriate here, uh, here for that. And so that's how you go in and change the underlay stitch for something like this. Now, sometimes when you go in and you are uh, working with different uh, fabric types and things like that, if you go in, if you something comes up looking like this, you can select this. Up top here, you can uh, take away the cap corners here. You can uh, deselect these items here. 
and they will improve the stitching quality of very small lettering. And this is what I use. I just take, I just uncheck these and it improves the quality of those. And that's how you were going to do that. Now, our next one up top here is a little bit lar is larger. And for something like this, I need more underlay stitches. For, for this, I have an edge run underlay stitch here and a zigzag. So this is appropriate here for this uh, size here that's gonna stitch on a jacket back here, okay? And so this much larger, and therefore I need more, more underlay stitches on it to secure the border and, and the inside of the fill as it goes in uh, stitching on top of the garment, okay? And that is a um, view pretty much of what the underlay stitches do, okay? And so um, we're gonna leave this uh, right here. Um, we're gonna end this, um, and so we'll move on to the next one. Now, uh, I want to um, let you know also that um, as we can continue with this, with our next uh, series of videos here, you know, um, again, this is designed for beginners, very beginners, someone very new to the software and um, very important. Now, what I wanna share with, one last thing I wanna share with you here with this, this white cross there here is an indication of the center of the hoop. It's in the wrong location here because if I were to select this here like this, this should be in the center for the hoop in order for the next run on the embroidery machine. So in order to move this back uh, to the center of this, uh, there are some things you can do. You can navigate uh, to this icon here where it says auto starting in. If you click it once or twice, sometimes it'll go back to the center of the design. If you double click it here, if you right click on it, you wanna make sure that the apply auto starting end is on. The maintain automatically is selected here. Okay, this is the hoop here and this is the center of the hoop and this is where the white cross here should always be unless you change it to a different position. Okay, and make sure that this is saved. Wanna make sure that that's saved. <clears throat> And so click OK here. So that white crosshair needs to go back to the center of the design. Okay. Whenever you go in, whenever you do lettering, anything that you do before you save it out to your uh, flash stick or send it to the machine, you want to run a stitch player. This is your stitch player. Or you can press Shift R. Once I left click this, 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 the player goes in, I can increase the speed of this or take it down. And so uh, with this, notice here also that this is doing a zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna stop this right away. And just checking here. So this should be a zigzag here for this because it is larger. Okay, I'll go back here to my stitch player. So as I go, I'll speed this up here also. And depending on and this is going on um, very thick fabric here. And therefore the edge run and the zigzag was, is sufficient for something that's this size here actually. And once it stitches this out, I'm gonna slow the speed down here on the uh, stitch player. This is a very, very important tool inside your software. And I'm just gonna bring this back here. And when it stitches a smaller text, you'll see how it stitches that smaller text with the correct underlay stitches. I'm just going to drag this over here and move this, going to speed this up a little bit. And here. The stitch player is going to show you exactly how this is going to stitch out. If there are any problems, you know, you should be able to go to the... Um, stop the stitch player and go make the necessary changes right away. And this is gonna show you what the, what is gonna stitch on the machine and how it's gonna stitch on the machine. So this is crucial. Before you save this, yeah, you should be able, you should run this every time. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. You just wanna run it to see and make sure that everything is gonna stitch in the correct order and with the right underlay stitches and things of that nature as well. It goes back to the center here and so now I'm going to click stop here and that's the last thing that you want to do before you save your design to your USB you know your floppy or send it out to your machine 
And this is going to do it for this session. I do thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something. I look forward to seeing you for the next session. Thank you so much for your time. And as always, uh, happy, happy digitizing.